This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Acceptance must be communicated, the fifth bullet point on page 20. Acceptance must be communicated, but the offeror may waive the right of communication. The offeror may waive. You can remember the word waive. If you think about the hotel next door to where we are now, what's the hotel called next door? Yeah, it's, it's called a liner. What's the Estonian word? I, I, you will know this, obviously. What's the Estonian word for wave? What's the Estonian translation of the English word wave? Liner. Liner. So if you, all you have to do is remember, and it doesn't matter if you spell wave wrongly in the exam, the offeror may wave if you write wave like that, that's fine, the marker will know what you mean. You're not going to pass or fail the law exam because you can't spell wave. So Estonian for wave is liner, and you can remember it with the hotel next door. What was the case there? I'll give you another easy way of remembering things. What's the shop called? Gun thing. Yeah, it's called Yerotchu. But yeah, it's a gun thing. Little silly ways of remembering these case names will help you. If I draw an horizon, what would I call that bit there? I would call it a what? Go on, you were right. A partridge, yeah, a partridge. And you can't remember the defendant, can you? No. I once met a person called Crittenden, but it's a very rare name in the UK. I don't know anyone called Crittenden. But partridge is the name of the case. What was it about? What is a partridge? It's a bird. What was this case about? Birds. What's the area of law? What's the area of law that the case Partridge and Crittenden helps us to, to remember? Adverts in a newspaper are offers. They are invitations, they're not offers. And even though it says offered for sale, it's not an offer. It may be communicated, acceptance may be communicated by a reliable third party. We had something else about reliable third parties just this afternoon, didn't we? Where did a reliable third party come in this afternoon? Notification of... Notification of revocation. Notification of revocation was can be communicated by a reliable third party. And that case was Dickinson and Dodds. This one is notification of acceptance, and that may be communicated by a reliable third party. In the case Powell and Lee was about applicants who were applying for a job to be the chief of a school, to be the headmaster of a school. And we're down to the last five shortlisted and they're going in for a third interview and they're being interviewed by a panel of five school governors and the chair of the school governors is a man called Lee this Lee Powell was the first applicant to go in for third interview and he has a brilliant interview really good a superb interview. what a performance he put in and the interview finished after about three quarters of an hour and he came out and he, a natural consequence, he decided he needed the bathroom. So he goes along to the bathroom and he's standing, and you women may not understand this, but he's standing there in the, the appropriate place in the, the bathroom. And the door opens and Lee, the chair, walks in and stands in the cubicle next to him, the, the, the position next to him. And they stand in there and Lee turns to Powell and said, you had a, you didn't turn like that, for heaven's sakes. He, he, he said, you had a brilliant interview there. So far as I'm concerned, the job is yours. So Powell said, well, thank you very much. I'm very happy about that. He goes home, gets a letter on Monday from the governors that says, 
uh, we're sorry to have to say, but you were unsuccessful, you were really good, and we wish you the best in the future, but he'd not got the job. But his, he had made his offer, his offer was accepted in the toilets by the chairman, and it's been accepted, communication of acceptance by a potentially reliable third party. Why has he not got a contract? If somebody makes you an offer in the toilets, or accepts your offer in the toilets, it depends on his intention to create legal relations, <laughs> the point where Powell lost, Powell lost this case, and the reason is because Lee, even though he was the chair of the panel who was interviewing Powell, even though he was the chair of the five governors, he obviously had not had time to discuss all five applications with the other four governors and was therefore not a person with the apparent authority to bind the school and, and accept the offer. So he was not a reliable third party. It's a tricky one, but Powell must have known that Lee could not have discussed all five applications, didn't have the time to discuss all the five applications, um, applicants' details. Silence cannot be acceptance. Felthouse and Bindley. This is a nephew who's emigrating. He's going to move abroad. And he's getting rid of all his possessions in the UK. He doesn't want to take anything with him, the house, the furniture, the car, the bits and pieces that he owns, but he also has a horse. He puts all the goods into the possession of an auctioneer who's going to sell off these goods. But you can't put a horse into the hands of an auctioneer and, and expect him to keep it while he processes the advert and the catalogue and calls people to the auction and the horse is dying. You can't pass a horse to an auctioneer. It needs to be fed and watered and exercised and cleaned out and brushed. And so he gave the horse into the possession of his uncle. And the uncle exercised the horse. He would ride it out, he would clean it, feed it, water it, brushing it, combing it, looking after the horse. And the uncle fell in love with the horse. The uncle thought the horse was super. So the uncle wrote to his nephew abroad. He said, this horse of yours, I rather like it. I'll pay you a hundred pounds for the horse. If I don't hear from you, I'll take it that the horse is mine. I take it that you've accepted. But nobody told the auctioneer. And the auctioneer duly sold the horse. And the uncle said, you can't sell the horse. That's my horse. I've made an offer. I've not heard back from my nephew. Therefore, the horse is mine and you should not have sold it. And he went to court. And the court said, silence can't be acceptance. I will offer to buy Sandra's car from her. Sandra, I'll pay you £200 for your car. If I don't hear from you, I take it the car is mine. And she doesn't answer. So the car is mine. No. You cannot make someone reject your offer. You can't force someone to respond to your offer. Silence cannot be acceptance. All right, Mara, are you explaining? Blind. What's the matter? What did you not understand? You're discussing everything that you've understood. Is that going to take long? No, I didn't think so. Does that mean you've not understood much and that's not why it's not going to take long? Acceptance may be by conduct. Acceptance may be by conduct. This is actually two points. It should be two separate bullet points. Acceptance may be by conduct, the case Brogdon Metropolitan Railways. And then the next point should be, once you've started the acts of acceptance, the offer cannot be revoked. 
once you have started the acts of acceptance, the offer cannot be revoked. So we'll deal with the first one, acceptance by conduct. Remember, a contract does not have to be in writing. There doesn't have to be any final, formal set out of the contractual terms which every party must stamp and sign at the bottom and it's got to be notarized. No, it doesn't even have to be in writing. It can just be an oral contract. It doesn't have to be finalized. It doesn't have to be formally finalized. And you can have acceptance simply by performing in a way which suggests that you have accepted the offer. If I make an offer and your actions are in line with what I would have expected if you had formally accepted, if your actions following my offer are what I would have expected if you had formally accepted my offer, then you're accepting by conduct. And the case Brogdon Metropolitan Railways was a case about the supply of coal to the railway company and there was a series of negotiations and, and letters going backwards and forwards and then eventually the last letter went which set out what Brogdon felt were the final terms of the contract. And so he then started supplying the coal to the railway company. And the railway company accepted the coal and used it to provide the power for their railway trains. But then at the end of a two-year contract, at the end of the first year, they said, we don't want any more coal. We have never accepted the contract, so you cannot sue. And Brogdon said, but by accepting the coal which I delivered, you're surely accepting by conduct. And the court agreed. The court said, yes, because they have not rejected the coal, because they've used it in their own business, surely they have accepted the contract. So acceptance by conduct is fine, it's good acceptance. The next point is the, the second part of that one. As I say, it should be two separate bullet points there. Once you've started, once you've started the acts of acceptance, the offeror cannot revoke the offer. Once you've started performing in accordance, if acceptance is going to take a, an extended period of time, once you've started performing, the offeror can't take back the offer. In the case of Errington and Errington, this is about a man who said to his son and daughter-in-law, if you will pay my mortgage, I will transfer the house to you. Once the mortgage is paid off, I will then transfer the house to you. So the son started paying the mortgage, started paying the loan back. And after a period of time, the father turns to the son and daughter-in-law. He says, I've changed my mind. I'm not going to transfer the house to you at all. But they've already started paying it. They've got another 4, 10, 15 years to go. But they have started. And so the father cannot take that offer back. He can't change it. So once the acts of acceptance have started, the offeror cannot revoke. There was a, an exam question. It's not a case, it's an exam question situation. And it's about a man sitting at a seaside bar in the south of England with his friends and at the table behind him there was a particularly noisy group of people and one of this noisy group of people said I will pay a hundred pounds to the first person to swim across the harbour from one side of the harbour to the other side of the harbour I'll pay a hundred pounds to swim across now that was in a different party than, than our, our hero he heard it but he didn't say anything, he just 
loudmouth, and, and carried on with his friends talking. Five minutes later, a small child fell into the water on the other side of the harbour. And our hero stands up, takes off most of his clothes, dives into the water and starts swimming to the other side to rescue this child. As he's doing it, Mr. Loudmouth behind says, Don't think you're claiming my hundred pounds, I'm taking my offer back. Can the man claim the hundred pounds? Yes, she can. Once the acts of acceptance have started, the offeror cannot withdraw that offer, cannot revoke that offer. And the child was saved. Thank heavens for that, eh? The postal rule applies to acceptance. The postal rule does apply. Remember, the postal rule did not apply to revocation of offer. If you want to withdraw an offer, revoke an offer, you cannot rely on the postal rule. I mentioned earlier that the postal rule probably should no longer be asked because with, in these times of instant communication, it's almost a redundant concept. But it might be. So I'll tell you about the postal rule anyway. The postal rule says that with reference to acceptance, only acceptance, not revocation of offer, it applies only to the acceptance of an offer. And it says that an acceptance is effective from the moment it is put into the postal system, properly stamped and addressed, through the proper channels, that is, you put it into a post box rather than give it to the postman, through the proper channels, and both the, the one who's accepting and the offeror must have thought that postal acceptance was appropriate. You go to malls to buy your cornflakes. You make the offer with your packet of cornflakes and you put it on the conveyor. Do you expect, the, typically, the girl who's scanning these things, do you expect her to say, we'll write you a letter to tell you whether we've accepted your offer? I, it's just totally inappropriate. Uh, so, if you have face-to-face -face contact with the offeror, it's most unlikely that postal acceptance is appropriate. It's most improbable that the offer or the offeree and the offeree says, I think I'll accept by a post because I've got face-to-face -face contact. So that's the postal rule, the three elements, properly stamped and addressed, through the proper channels, both parties must have thought it was appropriate to have postal acceptance. But if those three conditions are satisfied and the letter of acceptance is put into the post through the proper channels, properly stamped and addressed, and it was appropriate, we have a contract. From that moment it goes into the postal system. We have a contract. And even though the letter may be lost, or never delivered, or destroyed, or for whatever reason the offeror never receives the letter, we still have a contract. So the postal rule, it must be appropriate both parties must have thought it was sensible. It must be properly stamped and addressed. It must go through the proper channels and it only applies to acceptance of contracts. Acceptance, not revocation. Household Fire Insurance Company and Grant I think there's a new list in your case. It's a Superman list. I think I created a new list called Superman. Yes, there it is on page 133. And we've got R and Clark already. R and Clark, Clark Kent. And down at the bottom of that list, we've got a household fire insurance company and Grant. I was thinking there of Grant Dalton. Okay, 
This was a, a prospectus has been issued by a company inviting people to apply to buy shares. Grant writes to apply to buy some shares. So there's the offer. Grant makes the offer to the fire insurance company. The fire insurance company accept the offer and writes their response to Grant. But now they're writing to ask him for some more money. He claimed that he never received the letter of acceptance and therefore he should not have to pay. His offer was never accepted. And the fire insurance company said, we put it in a letter. We put it in an envelope, properly stamped and addressed. We put it into the postal system through the proper channels. If you didn't receive it, that's not our fault. You applied by post, we accepted by post. Therefore, we have a contract. And Grant had to pay. Grant lost the case. He was in contract and was therefore obliged to honour the contract. And finally on this page, acceptance, the other half of the agreement, acceptance must be effected within a reasonable time. You know what is reasonable time. It's a time which is reasonable. The case we've already looked at, Ramsgate Victoria Hotel and Montefiore, and it was about what? Oh God, I can't remember. Shares, it was about shares, yeah. It was. He offered to buy shares uh, and then they didn't accept within a reasonable time. There were five months. He offered in June. They didn't accept until November. And he said, no, that can't be good acceptance. So acceptance must be within a reasonable time. In the context of a share offer, acceptance should be within, I think it's three months. Might be three weeks. Three comes to mind. I can't remember. It's months or weeks. <laughs> 